Good morning, everyone. Today's video, we will see the explanation of lab program 5A of data structures laboratory. The agenda of today's session is to know the aim of the program, followed with introduction to the postfix expression, followed with the algorithm that is used to evaluate the postfix expression, present an example, and then the program followed with the demo. Right? The aim of the program is now to design, develop, and implement a program in C for the stack application. An application here is the evaluation of the suffix expression, which is nothing but the postfix expression, which contains a single digit operands and the operators mentioned here. The operators are here plus subtraction operator, multiplication operator, division operator, and the exponential operator. Before you go for the program, let us now briefly look into the introduction to the postfix expression. So what is a postfix expression? So this postfix expression or the notation of the expression was given by a, a Poland uh, scientist or we always call it a Polish logician, mathematician, philosopher named Jan Lukasvis, right? So the main intention of this uh, mathematician is to develop a parenthesis free prefix notations as well as the postfix notations for the expressions. The reason because when I take any expression, say for example, I take an expression something like this, right? So the expression could be uh, A plus B star C. When I give an expression in this way, the evaluation basically has two entities to do with. One is the precedency, precedence of operators, and the other one is with respect to the associativity of the operators. So we talk about the precedence, the higher priority. So we all know that we follow the Hardman's bracket, right? Right? Addition, right? Um, we have brackets to be evaluated first. Next, we have division and the multiplication operator, then the addition and the subtraction operator. So, this is how we uh, give the priority to the different operators, right? So, if I skip these priorities, so I may not get the right answer for the expression. In order to obtain the right answer, I'll have to follow these two things. But then uh, we need proper ways to evaluate it. But then when we have a notation which is free of all these entities, the things become easier. So he wanted to develop something called as a prefix and a postfix notation, which will have a parenthesis free, free of precedence of operators' involvement and associated. So sometimes this postfix operation is also referred to as a uh, suffix, also referred to as reverse college uh, notation, or we call it as RPM. Okay. So what is this postfix notation? Let us see. So very simple as it is, in the postfix notation, the operator comes after the operands. So when I have an expression, we have two entities here. Operands. And the operator. So, in normal expression, which we call it as an infix, we will uh, write an operator in between the two operands. But when I take a postfix notation of the same, I will write the operator after the operands. So, operands will come first, then the operator. That's how exactly is your postfix expression when we're talking about the postfix expression. So, we by this time we would have known how to write an infix to a postfix notation. Then, when I have a postfix expression, the order of evaluation of the postfix expression is always in a single direction left to right. Why? Because normally, when I take any infix expression, right, or infix notation, the, uh, the associativity depends on my operators. 
so whether it is plus or star or whether it is the different operators involved where i have to go to left to right or right to left nothing like that so when we talk about the postfix expression or the evaluation is always in terms of left to right so there's no change in the direction no right to left it's always in terms of left to right right and we all know that the evaluation of the postfix expression is one of the application of the step right so what is the algorithm that is followed in order to find or to evaluate the postfix expression given a postfix expression how we can evaluate it what is algorithm is simple so you should have a stack for this so you there is a compulsory that i should have a stack for the same so given any proper postfix expression okay whatever is the expression any expression you take into consideration right so you have to given any postfix expression so for example i take a postfix expression something like this 63 plus so we all know that the uh, infix expression for this should have been something like this 6 plus 3 so given any postfix expression how do you evaluate this you all know that the evaluation of this will be 9 so how do i get the answer what is the algorithm that is for very simple so what you have to do here is you will have to follow certain steps so what are the steps that you will have to follow start scanning the expression in the direction from left to right so start from direction left to right so start getting the uh, scanning the expression wherein i get every operand and the operators remember so i have to get the operand as well as the operators involved in my expression one after the other and as the program is being stated with the aim i have to have only single digit operands that's all not more than single no two digits is allowed okay single digit i should have so start scanning the expression from left to right get the next token so that is the uh, symbol i can tell so get the next token when i talk about it is the symbol in the expression what is your symbol symbol can be either an operand or the operator so get the next token after getting the token say for example the first token which i will retrieve is now 6 so as you all know 6 is what for me it is the operand 6 and 3 are the operands for me wherein plus is the operator yes so i should first check what is the symbol that i have uh, scanned if the symbol is an operand very simple it is an operand push it on to the stack so i should have a stack here right have a stack push that operand on to the stack if it is an operand suppose say okay after pushing it go to the again go to the uh, next token so the next token here is what to uh, what here it is 3 right again you can observe that 3 is an operand you simply push it on to the stack again retrieve the next symbol you can now see the next symbol is what plus plus is what ma it is an operator so it is an operator so what should you do we have to do something else so the same thing will not work if it is an operand only we will have to push it onto the stack right if it is an operator you should not push it onto the stack so what should you do if it is an operator you should pop the elements from the stack twice right twice we will have to pop the elements of the uh, elements from the stack right so the first pop what you do assign it to be your right hand operand that means to say the first pop here now is your second operand that is rhs so popping it so what do i pop here now i pop 3 from my stack which is op2 so why am i uh, uh, popping this is because the scanned symbol is now an operator so you should perform the operation 
Next, fourth step, which is now your right hand upper hand. So I name it as P1. So which is the popped element now? It is 6. And we all know that the operator or the symbol which I am right now scanning is what ma? It is a plus operator. So what should I do? Apply the operator to the two operands. So what is the operator now? OP1, remember? OP1 is your second popped element. OP2 is the first popped element. Right? So 6 plus 3. The reason because you all know that stack is last in, first out. Right? So OP2 is your first pop. OP1 is your second pop. You have to remember. Apply the operator to the two operands and give the result. That is 9. 6 plus 3 is 9. So what should I do with this result? I should not keep quiet. I should not throw this anywhere. Again, I'll have to push it onto the stack. So right now, there were two. I just popped. The stack is empty. Right now, 9 is just pushed onto this stack. Right? And you should repeat this step, right? Getting the next token, check whether it is an operand or an operator, do the required operations. Okay, you have to keep doing this till the expression gets exhausted. Means the expression is being ended. There are no more symbols to be scanned. So you can now see that there are no more symbols to be scanned here. After plus, there's nothing, it's end, right? Once the expression has been exhausted, the result is at the top and that is only the only element in the stack. Remember, it is only one element on the stack. If your expression is a valid one, that stack at the end will have only one element, right? Which is now your final result. Remember. That is your final result. Yes. So, just to move upon the execution, like how exactly it uh, uh, executes. So, we'll just see how it works upon. Okay. Fine. So let us see an example for the same. Evaluate the postfix expression 643 stack. This is to be an valid postfix expression. So initially, you can observe now the stack which I consider will be empty. So right now, it is empty. That is, you can observe that top we will initialize to equal to minus 1. Top variable is equal to minus one. Right, so it's empty. Okay. Start scanning in the direction left to right. Okay. So what is the symbol that we get at the first iteration? Scanning from left to right. It is six. So I should have some methodology just to find out whether it is an operator and an operand. So you can now just by looking at it, you can easily find out that it is an operand. Operand, sorry. So if it is an operand, what should I do? Onto the stack, I should push it onto the stack. This is six. Wherein the top is now pointing to the topmost element inside my stack. Next, which is the next op, uh, next uh, symbol now? It is the next symbol now, 4. Right. So the next symbol is now to be scanned is 4. And you all know that 4 is an, again, what students? Of what? It is a operand. Push it onto the stack. Yes. Push it onto the stack there. Push it onto the stack. And you can observe that the stack is now having two elements where top is pointing to the upper right four. Yes. Next, which is the next uh, uh, symbol for us to work upon? It is three. 
So you all know that three is again an upper and push it onto the stack. Yes, where uh, top is now pointing to three. Yes. Next, which is the next symbol that I get now? Here is star. So we know that star is an operator. So since star is an operator now, I should pop two times from the stack, wherein first pop is the second operand, the second pop gives me the first operand. So which is the uh, first, which is the second operand, that is the first pop. So I am just popping from the stack, which element? Three. So OP2 is now what? Three. Yes. Next, the second pop I do. So what is my stack right now? Stack six and four. And top is pointing to four right now. Yes. So I'll do the second pop now again. Which element gets removed from my stack? That is four. Yes. So what should I do now? What should I do now? I should apply star to this thing. Remember, four is my first operand, star three. So that is what the answer is now, 12. So what should I do with 12 now? I should, the intermediate result should be again pushed onto the stack. Stack which was containing six now contains 12. Where top is now pointing to 12 there. Next, which is the next symbol that I get here. Okay. Next symbol which I just get now here is, the next symbol to be scanned is plus. So what should I now do with plus? Plus is now no more an operand, it is an operator so what should i do i should now pop two things two times from my stack which will be op1 and the other one is op2 the first pop is op2 yes so remove this so i just get 12 as op2 and the stack will now have what at this position stack will have only one element that is Six. Stack will have only one element that is six. So it is now the second pop will give me six. So apply plus on third six plus 12 because six is my first operand, 12 is my second operand. The result is 18. So 18 will be now pushed on to the stack. Yes. 18 is now pushed on to the stack right now. Yes. So and you can observe now, there are no more uh, entities to be scanned in my expression. I have scanned all and I have reached the end. So that means to say now, your final result is placed in your stack. So you will have to pop it. And remember, if at all the expression is a valid, at the end, stack will contain only one element, yes, which is your final result. So what is your final result now? The answer is 18. This becomes the answer or the evaluation of your postfix expression. This becomes the answer of the evaluation of the postfix expression there, right? So let us now see the program for the same, how exactly it works with respect to the program. Okay. Let us now see the program for the same. So I have included the header file stdio.h, string.h and ctype.h. These are the header files. So, so why I need this? I need string.h to obtain 
the string length of a string in the program. So where it is, we will see. And C type dot h is included to use the function so called as is digit. So let us see where it is used. Function declaration. I have one function called as compute, which return type is double. Okay, and takes three arguments. So as the name indicates, compute something. So we are calculating intermediate results, right? Whenever the symbol is an operator, that thing is performed by this function. So we have symbol op1, op2. So symbol is of type character, op1 is double, and op2 is also double. Moving on to the main function there. So I take one variable s, yes, which is an array of type double. And this s yes, will act as a stack for my operands storage. Yes. And I have three variables, op1, op2, and res. Op1 is used for storing my LHS. Op2 is storing my RHS. Res is storing my intermediate result and the final result too at the end. Okay. So I have declared top, uh, which is used for my stack. And initially, stack is empty, isn't it? Top is minus 1. And I've used i for indexing. We'll see where it is used. Then we have declared an array of characters named as postfix of size 20. This is a character array in order to store a valid postfix expression. Then we have another character called as a symbol. So what is the symbol storing for me? The scanned symbol of the postfix expression. Right? Now, asking the user now to enter the postfix expression. Ask the user to enter the postfix expression. And he will enter it. So use a scanner and store it in the array called as postfix. And postfix is a character array. So format specifier is percentage s. And I no need to specify the address operator. Why? Because postfix is an array name. Array name itself will give you the base address. So you not have to use address. So next, what should I do? You know that you have to scan every entity in the expression in the direction left to right. So whatever expression I give, it will be stored in an array. Why? Because postfix is an array, right? It is an array of characters. So I, I'll take the same example, 643 star plus. So it will be stored as an array. And the name here is now the postfix. And array, you all know the indices will start with 1, 2, 3, and then 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yes. So what should I do? I should scan the expression from which direction? Left to right from the index 0 to, to 4. So how do I, here pictorically I am telling you 4. But in general, any expression I give, what is the last index of the last element? Okay, so it all depends upon the length of the string. Can you observe? What is the length of this string? Okay, one, two, three, five. Length is five. What is the index of the last element? Len minus one. That is five minus one. That is equal to four. So in general, I have to start scanning from 0 till, till where? Till 1 less than the length of the string, right? So I have to use a for loop like this, where i is acting as the index for this array. That is my postfix, which starts with 0. And i should be less than string length of postfix. So string length is a function that gives the length of my string uh, string that is my postfix or the array of characters yes so i less than so in this case what is the length i that should be less than five that means to say i will start with zero right 
and goes on till less than 5. So that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I don't want 5. So there's no, not requirement for me to take the fifth index, right? And you all know that since it is a string, it will be terminated with a null character, not required. So I have to go still 0 to 4. That is less than string length of postfix. Then I plus plus. So start getting the tokens one by one. So I'll store it in the uh, variable called a symbol. Symbol is equal to postfix of i. So i equals to 0, right? So symbol will have now 6. Like that, it will have 4, 3, star, plus, right? Goes on. So what should I do? I should check whether it is an operand, right? If it is not an operand, definitely it is an, an operator. So what should I do here is, how do I check whether it is an uh, operand? So there's one method called as keys digit. So what is this ease digit method doing for me? It is checking whether the given argument is a digit. Means digit means is it between 0 to 9. If it is a digit, it returns true. Else, it returns false. Very simple. Then. Whatever you pass the argument here is a digit. Why? Because the program tells for me, my operands are single digit, definitely it will be from 0 to 9. Yes, if it is a zero, any digit between 0 to 9, it gives me true, else it gives me false. So each digit symbol, if it is true, means it is a digit, push the symbol onto the stack. So the stack is yes, and you all know that you have to increment the top plus 1. First, you should increment the top by 1. Right? Top always points to the topmost element in the stack. Since you are pushing a new element, top has to be incremented first, then assign the element at that top position. Isn't it? So S of plus plus top equals to symbol minus in single quotes I have given zero. The reason because why I'm doing this is you know that symbol is of type character. Though you give a digit. It will not store it as a digit, rather it will be stored as what ma? It will be stored as a ASCII value. So remember, the ASCII value for 0 here is 48, for 1 it is 49, for 2 it is 50, for 3 it is 51, for 4 it is 52, 5 it is 53, 6, it is 54, goes on, right? And it moves on. So just observe now. I should not push the ASCII value. See, if you just give S yes, plus plus top is equal to symbol, it will push the ASCII value. But I don't want ASCII value. I want its respective digit value. So how do I get the digit? Very simple, very simple here. So this will be done as symbol. Symbol is ASCII value. What is symbol to me right now? 6. What is the ASCII value of 6? 54. Then minus. What is the ASCII value of 0? 48. What is the value that I get? 6. Yes. 6 will be pushed onto the stack. The standing is very important. We have to know that. Okay. Similarly, now i gets increment, now i becomes 4. Again, 4 is a digit. Yes, so again push 4 onto the stack. Top will be incremented. What is 4? 52. 52 minus 48 is again 4 there. Push 4 onto the stack. Similarly, 3. 3 is what mark? 51 minus 48. Again, it is 3. Push 3 onto the stack. Right? 6, 4, 3, they are all the digits for me. The next, next symbol that I get is star. So obviously, is digit star, the result will be false because it is not a digit. It is no more a digit. Star is not a digit, isn't it? Right? So what should it do now? It should pop two elements from the stack, perform the required operation, push the result onto the stack. Very simple. So else, I give a else part here, wherein 
op2 is my first pop element op1 is my second pop so how do i pop it first retrieve the element from s of top then decrement the value of top minus minus yes so you have to first retrieve it then decrement the value of top s of top minus minus again s of top minus minus okay then perform the operation so result is equal to call the function compute pass the symbol with op1 and op2 yes so you can do this operation why because symbol can be anything so you might tell mom directly we will do not possible right symbol can be anything here isn't it so i have to based on the symbol i should perform the operation so i'll call the function compute once the result is returned push it again back to the stack and this will continue till the entire expression is been uh, scanned and perform the required operation based on the uh, operand or it is an operator yes so once that is done you will have to find out the final result as i told you the final result will be in the stack you will have to just pop it and there is only one element in the stack so res is equal to s of top minus minus is popped it out then print the final result right now let us see that send of the main there let us now see what does compute do so based on the symbol i should perform the operation so i have a switch case here switch symbol based on the symbol check whether it is plus or star or minus or division or the exponential so exponential can be either represented by dollar symbol or the caret symbol based on that perform the operations and then uh, return it okay here it sorry this is not uh, star students you will have to star it should be written as it must be return as it is power isn't it so you have to write your the function pow op1 comma op2 op1 comma op2 okay and in order to support this power function you have to include the the uh, header file math dot h yes so this is how you can write the compute function right so you will have to do the exponential by calling the power function passing op1 and op2 as the um, arguments to it yes so now this have a look at the demo of the program how it works so the same program i have just put it here okay so hash include i have to include the header file math dot h and here it should be pow op1 comma op2 okay so this from the same program whatever is this given same thing i'm just running it on my the compi online compiler so let us enter the expression here the valid postfix expression 643 star i will just give the same enter the result is now 80 the value is 80 as per what we had seen while tracing the example so it is the same so the same example what i had just traced for you here the answer is you can just find out it is 18 so 643 yes 643 star plus the answer is now 18 fine marks okay the same wise
it's all about the demo of the program and oh, it's a simple one which you'll have to just trace it out now it's at it works and it's one of the application of stack wherein we evaluate the postfix expression so evaluating a postfix expression uh, removes most of the problems with respect to the involvement of precedence of operators and associativity of operators thank you